So we've had a whole lot of people asking about, you know, or having opinions on where they think Remake Part 2 is going to end, how they think it's going to end, why they think it's going to end that way. And I, I've thrown my bit and pieces out there on what I think. And I've actually done videos about it in the past, but I've kind of come to a few new conclusions on a few things. So I want to get that out there. Talk about Remake Part 2, why I think the perfect ending would be for this game real quick if you're not subbed to the channel please subscribe to the channel and throw a like on the video if you are coming back continuously and digging the content helps other people see my stuff a whole bunch i appreciate all of you all and real quick shout out to drac on patreon dracone the newest kaufmanite man i appreciate you much love brother we got us uh, i'm gonna send you some cool stuff in june so anyway let's get right into the video so a lot of you know that i have this theory that if they're telling the story in three acts whether whether it's four games or three games i think you, you can break it down into three acts most epic stories you can break down to three acts right you got your beginning your middle and your end but the middle is almost always and it almost always ends on a tragedy or a tragic note or something like that and i always compare it to the empire strikes back from the original star wars uh, trilogy i think that's just like one of the most perfect endings for a second act ever in a movie or work of fiction or what have you i think remake part two will be no different i really feel like um we get to the whirlwind maze the northern crater that area right there we get up there and things are strange right so after the temple of the ancients depending on how remake wants to tell the story i feel like the black materia i feel like all that meteor and all that that's so integral to the plot of what this story is. I feel like those things have to be there. Even though they're going a different route with things and Sephiroth's got a different idea about how to do things this time as far as how it pertains to how he wants to deal with the different characters and whatnot. I really feel like the Black Materia, Summoning, Me Summoning Meteor, is all in play for Sephiroth's ultimate victory. That's still his goal. I'm going to hold to that until I'm proven wrong in the game. I'm gonna to hold to that until the game shows me that I'm wrong about that, in which I will course correct. But I still feel like that's the end goal for Sephiroth. So I feel like as the party gets closer to what's going on, at the end of the Temple of the Ancients, we start to see Cloud finally break to Genova's will. There are little hints that it's happening leading up to that point, but that's by far the most potent example of that happening. So. After that, Aerith decides to leave the party. She goes on to the northern, or she goes on to the Forgotten City, and all this other stuff. You eventually find your way up to the uh, Whirlwind Maze, to that area where Sephiroth's imprisoned. This is where my idea, my theory for the ending, really kicks off. I think this is where the game ends. I know there's a lot of game between Midgar and there, but the other areas of this game are not going to be nearly as big as Midgar nearly as big and i feel like this game is going to be bigger than the first game so i think you can finish this game in 20 25 hours give or take you know i mean everybody's speed is different i feel like this next game is going to take you 40 hours to get through it 40 hours to get through it i think you can fit a lot of story in there 60 hours if you do everything that's my ideal perception of the the scope and size of part two We'll, we'll see. I understand. We'll see. This is all I guess at this point. But, so you get to the end of the game. You get to Whirlwind Maze. I feel like Cloud starts to act kind of shady, right? He goes to give the Black Materia to uh, Sephiroth. The party intervenes. They don't let him do it. Like, what are you doing? And then Cloud fully crumbles under the weight of everything that's going on. The questions he has about himself. The questions Tifa keeps, like... Tifa keeps kind of acting weird around him, like, I don't, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's accurate. You don't sound right. That This doesn't sound right, you know? Things like that going on. Aerith also kind of acting weird with Cloud. The other party members starting to poke and prod, like, poke holes in Cloud's story, so to speak. Throughout game two, I think we're going to see a lot of that. Them poking holes in Cloud's story. Uh, this doesn't add up. This doesn't sound right. But you said this, you said you were this, but how did you get to this if you couldn't be this? So, there's going to be a lot of that going on. I think Vincent's going to bring some of that. I think Sid's going to bring some of that. I think Yuffie is going to go Cloud a little bit too. There are going to be elements of like people poking holes in Cloud's story that weren't there in the first game because the characters that are going to be doing some of it weren't there in the first game. So I think that is going to be a natural progression of the plot and the narrative as well. So 
the party stops him. They finally stop him. This is where all the poke, poke and holes and cloud story all comes to a head right here. What are you? What are you doing? What is this? You know, what are we even doing here? Cloud cracks. He completely breaks. And in the breaking of his will, which is what kept him from, which is what made him a failure to begin with in Hojo's program, right? He didn't, he didn't succumb to Genova's will. His will was too strong for Genova. So he was obliterated. We're going to get into that in another video later on today as well. But just to keep it for this today, he completely cracks. Boss battle, reunion, cloud. I believe we're going to have a boss battle with, I'm just calling him reunion cloud because he's going to be just like a wild animal. All of his abilities, all of his power, un, unsheathed, on display, and just coming to wreck the party. After a whole game of them poking holes in his story and questioning him and, and not, no, and they're not doing it to be bad. They're just trying to figure him out. They're trying to figure out this guy that's leading us right now. What are we, what are we behind? This is all going to come to a head at the end of the game and all part of Sephiroth's new plan to control Reunion Cloud. The final boss fight of game two, an enraged Cloud, using all of his abilities, screaming, and kind of remember when they were in the drum and he confronts Sephiroth and he's like, ah! he just goes after Sephiroth and he's just like, this guttural, just, ah! it's just like, it's gonna be that the whole fight. Him running around through the battlefield, cutting, trying to cut people down and you see the Shinra guys in the background, you know, Rufus trying to keep people. That's part of the background. You know, they're not involved in the fight, but you can't see them in the background. You see Sephiroth's body encased in the ice and Mako in the background is the backdrop for this battle. You know, he's, he's trying to get through people, the chatter from the party members, like, you know, they're like, stop. They're, they're trying to reason with him as you're fighting him. You know, I think it would be just this dramatic sequence and, the music for this piece, we all know what Cloud's theme is. It's the overworld theme, right? Um, I think a sped up, up tempo version of that with some double kick drums and so, some metal guitar like they did for the Airbuster fight, but like real dramatic and you splice in like echoes of those chosen by the planet with it, with a choir and orchestra in the background. You go, you go all out with this piece of music here. You go all out with this piece of music. And it's just this incredibly like like emotionally draining boss battle for the end user, right? For the gamer. And then after the battle, after you beat Cloud or you fend him off, you get his energy down to a certain point, he backs off, he jumps away, he gives Sephiroth the black materia. The weapons begin to awaken, you know, and the weapons awakening needs to be absolutely horrifying. Horrifying, you know, not like, whoa, that's cool, that's cool, and it will be cool. But it needs to be like on the scope and they need to look they need to look menacing they need to look horrifying you know because they're the planet's last defense basically so i think you see them awakening all over the world maybe one or two new ones you know for extra boss battle kind of flavor uh optional boss battle kind of flavor you know and then everything starts to crumble cloud falls into the live stream you know, and the party's taken captive, taken by Shinra, so they can get out of there. But in getting them on the high wind and getting them out of there, they're basically taken as their captives, you know. Uh, and then maybe fade to black. Last shot on Tifa's face, like looking at the, the crevice the cloud fell into, like looking real distraught. Fade to black, a few days later, they wake up, Baird's talking to Tifa, they look up in the sky. There's Meteor. That's how you end game number two. I would end game number two right there. Boom. There's your tragedy, your tragic ending. And it sets up a lot of things for game number three. Tifa leading the party. What's going on? I didn't even get into all the Zack stuff. I really feel like Zack's going to have a presence in that last battle. Trying to, I think that might be the final thing that breaks Cloud. You know? So I didn't get into all that because that's going to be another video for another time of what I think is going on with Zach and all this. I didn't want to crowd this video with too much information for you. We're going to get into that one later. Uh, but I've got another video coming today kind of explaining what I think is 
going to lead to this reunion cloud at the end of game number two. And a lot of you all have said you think game number two is going to be called Final Fantasy Reunion. That wasn't me. That was you all. And I think that's a great idea. Matter of fact, I might start calling it Final Fantasy Reunion because I think you all had a great idea on that. And I think that's one that uh, I would like to see that happen, actually. That was a good job by you all. So... I'm going to leave it there for that one. We got another video coming later on this evening. Uh, it's going to be a banger. We're going to have, we'll be talking about my theory with what's going on with Cloud, what I think is going to happen with him in the second game, where I think that leads for him throughout the story. So subscribe to the channel, throw a like on the video. I appreciate all of you all being here, listening to me talk about this uh, idea. And until next time, y'all have a great day. Be safe, be good to each other. Keep rocking. I will see you all in the next video. I want to say a quick thank you to my YouTube and Patreon members and supporters. If you would like to support the future creation of content on this channel, get some few extra perks and some art sent to your door every month, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. Details and links are in the video description.